Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Enthador. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.43, and we are the besieged town of Forest Home. And the, the siege is not going incredibly well. These goblins are apparently very good at climbing, and they are getting all over. There's one here on the roof, not sure what he's going to do. No one yet has found their way inside to the common areas, thank goodness, but one of them managed to sneak up here and kill a dog. I think we might have got him, though. Because I don't see... Ah, Ago Zolakongas' corpse. Okay, so we're, we're pretty good there. But we have another goblin bearing down on us here. So squads, Stonehilt's slayers. You know what we should do, actually, is we should select individuals. So yeah, Stonehilt's slayers. Let's go Bullzom. Bullzom, will you do me a favor and... Go kill this guy. Okay, and the rest of you are on standby, just in case bad stuff happens. You can guard against any other people climbing the walls. We have somebody sleeping here. Who are, Who is that? Patricia Longspear, thank you so much for being part of this. And of course, our ranged dwarves, all of them, all of them launch themselves down. The only dwarves who are still actually in a position to shoot anything are Cassiterides. And Homer and Alundril. That's it. All the rest of our 20 Marks Dwarves have decided to fling themselves down to certain death. So, good for them. Good for them. But we're doing okay. Oh, oh, Ballista, do you see it? Oh! It hit him. Awesome. Hopefully our dwarves don't go over there. Oh, there's... Who just... Someone's gonna get killed. Alan Drill. He went down there. Oh, you fools. Okay, this guy's, this guy's done for. This goblin. Has anybody else made it in? It doesn't look like it. How about this guy that was up here? He's still up there. He's still minding his own business. Um... Okay, this is unusual. We have all of our animals up on the ramparts here. That's the grizzly bear and the... The war dog. There's all of our ewes running away. Does that mean a goblin got in? There's obviously some kind of conflict here. Dead fisher berries. I didn't know fisher berries could die. Yes, so Dostin Gosp, Ukus Mobs, actually made it in here somehow and was killed by all of our war animals. Unfortunately, why are the rest of our war animals running away? I just don't know. Are they chasing someone? I don't see a goblin. Do you see a goblin? Everything looks okay. The animal's just running around like nutty, but I don't see a goblin. Vomit everywhere, but that's just Tuesday here at Forest Home. Alright, so with this overhang, the only way he could have got in... I don't even know how he could have got in, honestly. I guess he could have climbed up here. Where did... He didn't jump down into the battle, did he? Doodlejack. I have no idea what's going on. Let's just keep an eye on things. Alundril's gonna die. Yep. Oh, there goes another Ballista Bolt. They don't seem to be doing as much damage as you would imagine they would. Alright, stray war dog, but everybody else is still okay. Huh. We lost Alandril, but who's here now? Homer. Homer's in a martial trance. This is ugly. 
All right. Squads. I'm not even sure what to do right now. Who all's left? All right, let's go center on this squad. I guess that's them then. Let's select squads. All right. Bone Queen's bolts. Actually, where the heck is Pasarpina? They're all here. Okay. Holy crap. All right. I need them all to stay here for just a second. Let's open up the the inner silver door or the outer is it the outer silver door? Outer silver gate. Okay. Pull that, please. Now. Meanwhile, you guys just stay where you are. Hopefully the goblins will be too busy killing Homer. There goes another ballista bolt and it did nothing. Okay. Open. So Homer's dead now. But the Bone Queen's bolts. We can get them to safety anyway. Get over there. And I guess Pete's butchers, if there's any of those left, can go there as well. No. Oh, crap. That's not what I meant to do. Crap. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Bad move. A and C. Move actually to here. No, please don't go down there. It's the last place you want to go. You want to go. You want to go here. Stop. Stop. Seriously, guys, I need you to stop. Too late. That was my bad. That was just my bad. That was bad commanding right there. And as a result, we're gonna lose. Tellor and Mr. Mage. Looks like the rest, however, made it. Okay. Actually, Tellor and Mr. Mage are doing a pretty good job. All right. So now we go to Outer Silver Gate. And we're going to pull it again and get that open. Or closed, I should say. Anytime, guys. Wow, these dwarves are absolutely terrible at closing gates. Alright. So now I want the inner silver gate. And they're still going. I mean, they are still going here. Mr. Mage and Tellor. But the problem is, if just in case they kill this guy, I mean, I'll try. I'll try to command them to come here so I can get them in. But otherwise, they may see some of these guys and then it's, it's over. Pretty good, though, for Mark's Dwarves against melee goblins. They did it. Okay. Crap, we don't have much time. Okay, squads. Let's go Bone Queen's Bolts, select individuals, and it's Tellor and Mr. Mage. Okay, so that's B. And we're going to move you. I want you to be safe, so let's move you up here. And then we want Mr. Mage. See, this whole squad is still alive? Well, not all of them, but we're going to move Mr. Mage. We're going to move you here as well. Come on, do it. Do it. Why aren't you moving? I've commanded you. Tell Lord Mr. Mage, come on, you guys. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah, we're, we're stationing you. Perfect, Tell Lord. Come on. I don't want you to die. Uh, too late. They'll fight bravely. And they're doing a great job. Here comes a Ballista Bolt. Please don't kill my dwarf. Mr. Mage is dead. Let's see, Mr. Mage. No, it wasn't the 
Ballista Bolt. It was a goblin swordsman. Struck Mr. Mage in the head with her iron shield, bruising the muscle through the pond grabber leather hood. The goblin maceman bashes the Mr. Mage in the head with his iron morning star, and the injured part is cloven asunder. So, there goes Mr. Mage. Tellor is soon to fall hollow. Yep. And Tellor. So, Tellor was taken out by an iron pike, knocked unconscious by the goblin pikeman who stabbed Tellor in the head with her iron pike, tearing the muscles, shattering the skull, and tearing the brain. It looks like the way that she fell on the ground was the goblin maceman bashed Tellor in the left hand with his iron morning star, fracturing the bone, and a ligament was torn and a tendon was torn. Wow. Bloody, bloody battle. And my civilians are here trying to get the war animals back in their pen. I mean, it's a good thing we had these war animals here. They managed to take out a goblin. So that was fantastic. Alright, come on, you guys. There we go. Another ballista bolt. We got one. That was awesome. Let's see. Nope, that's Tellor. That's more Tellor. Does it not have reports of the deaths caused by the... Death is all around us. Death is all around us. Now that's more Tellor being killed. No, so it's not really telling us about the siege engines, but they're... They are working. See, they're, they hit a bunch of those guys. You can see them because they're all, like, wounded here. Come on, guys. Keep shooting. Okay, were they scared? Is that what happened? Yep. Alright, so... Apparently these goblins are... Even from way out there, they're too close to fire these... Gosh darn it. How much work do I have to do here? One thing I was wondering too is I, might, I was thinking I might have to roof this over. Because I figured a goblin standing here, even though they're 1z level down, could cause the dwarves to see them and flee. But if, I mean, if they're getting scared at this guy... It was way the heck out here. I mean, ballistas are useless. I mean, you have to have ridiculously long hallways for them to work. All right. All right. No more fun time. Um, squads. Bone Queen's bolts. Oops, no. Let's go back to selecting squads. Bolts and Pete's butchers. Can you guys move actually inside the fort. Meanwhile, Stonehilt Slayers, I want you here. There's a human. A human crossbowman is here to help. Where are the rest of the slayers? Alright, any it looks like no more goblins have found their way inside. Do we still have both grizzly bears? That is important because they have to have babies. I don't even know where they are. I see okay, there's a dog there in the dormitory. There's one grizzly bear. All of our lambs and ewes and whatnot have gotten back here. There's okay, there's grizzly bear number two. Where's our tiger or whatever? There's, okay, Stray War Giant Grizzly Bear. And Stray War Giant Grizzly Bear. Okay, so as long as they both survive, we should be okay. Okay, here come our melee troops. Except for, oh, someone just grabbed a drink. No problem. All right. All right, cool. So now we're going to enter Silver Gate. We are going to pull that. Hopefully none of our guys will try to walk out just at this moment. Oh, shoot. Here comes somebody. Made it, though. Thank goodness. Oh, oh stay. Stay. 
Seriously, these dwarves are the worst at pulling levers. The absolute worst. All right. And we're going to pull this one. Even when I put do it now, it takes them forever. Like, I don't understand. There's 50 idle dwarves, and you're trying to tell me that someone can't just run and pull a lever? Look at that. People are walking right by it. All right. Gates open. It's time to engage. What's your problem? Why are you Xing at me? Kaladin. What's your deal, Kaladin? You have no health problems. Why are you Xing? Seriously, what does that mean? All right. It's on. Oh, they're just whomping these guys. Alright, there's one of them who's staying behind, though. Who is that? Ingramish Redbeard. Because he's not seeing any goblins. So now what we have to do is squads, Stonehilt Slayers. I want you to kill. And let's select a rectangle. And let's select all these goblins. So now the Ingramish will help. Okay, now we're fighting down here. Nice. And that's it. That's it. We've killed all the goblins who were inside Forest Home. And the siege is over. We broke the siege. Holy crap. They ran away. All right. Oh, my. All right, so we're going to open everything up. The inner silver gate and the outer copper gate. But at what cost, ladies and gentlemen? At what cost? So many dead dwarves. So many dead. Okay, okay good. So squads A, B, C. You guys are off duty. Um, can we maybe not fire the ballista, guys? Is that a possibility? Since there are no more goblins? Let's, um, not in use. Not in use. Okay. And Kaladin still is blinking. Wound? Okay, so Kaladin's a bit dizzy. Let's get the alert back to inactive. And we have some work to do, ladies and gentlemen. Holy crap, do we have some work to do. This was... This was a tragedy of epic proportions. And there's still a goblin up there. I don't even know how to get to him. I guess squads, bone, queen's bolts, and Pete's butchers. Let's get you guys here. I guess? Maybe you could see him from there? If you can shoot up a Z-level? That's probably our best shot. But we're gonna need to build a roof over all this to prevent dwarves leaping to their deaths unnecessarily. God, look at- look at this! Just look at the blood and carnage everywhere. Have they decided they're not coming? No, I've asked them to station themselves. Oh, we're paused. Some of you guys are probably watching that going, Marcus, you big idiot, what are you doing? Here they come. Alright, hopefully we'll be able to shoot him. I'm not using text, will be text, so I have to scroll. There we go. Alright, cool. Oh, wow. They're getting him from all angles, that poor guy. Done. Of course, his body is going to be there forever. But here's the problem. Even if we build a roof here... They can get on top of it. We have to build an overhang everywhere. 
You know, I could build a floor overhang. Like, it doesn't have to be actually a, a wall. It could just be a floor. Oh, boy. Well, anyways, let's uh, end the episode by profiling a dwarf. That'll be fun. 264. Ivan Flamebriar. Doesn't sound like one of the dead, so should still be here. Yep, Ivan Flamebriar Inethaluk, who is unassigned, is currently storing an item in a bin. And Inethaluk means City Insights. Hopefully he will provide lots of insights to our city. Actually, I don't know if it's a he or a she. It's a she. Her husband is Cog, and eldest son is Degel. They're not in the fortress, but... Saffron and Catnip. I think Catnip is definitely dead. Saffron might be our eldest daughter and second eldest son. Then we have Butcher Pete is her youngest son. Butcher Pete, I think, is still alive. That's it, though. No other family. Very small family. There's Roscoe Greenbolt, actually, and Kellum Thor. They're both children as well. But I don't think they're here in Forest Home. And then there worships Lemul. And on friendly terms with a few people... No enemies. Okay. I am separated from Bembul Slave Bowel. Ooh, <laughs> Slave Bowel? Really? That's not the best name ever. I cannot give in to sadness. Within the last season, she was interested near a fine bed, interested near a very fine trap, interested near a fine, tastefully arranged slab. Well, there's going to be a few more tastefully arranged slabs after this fiasco of an invasion. She was delighted after watching a performance, interested after watching a performance. She watches a lot of performances, apparently. She was satisfied at work, shocked at the unexpected death of somebody. She didn't feel anything after seeing Catnip, Catnip, her son, die. She didn't feel anything after seeing her son die, but she grieved at somebody else's death. Oh man, what a weirdo. She is 56 years old, born on the 25th of Sandstone in the year 107. Her teeth are widely spaced, her hair is clean shaven, her lips are thick, her broad splayed out ears are very short, her hair is mahogany, her skin is dark peach, and her eyes are gold. Ivan Flamebriar likes clay stone, nickel silver, milk opal, koala bone, the color burnt sienna, goats for their eating habits, and the sight of the flower of euphoria. When possible, she prefers to consume Siamang and Peach Cider. She absolutely detests lizards. She has a great deal of patience, but she has a meager ability with social relationships, meager creativity, and quite poor focus. Alright, that's Ivan. Squads. Let's get you guys out. We need to fill up the squads with some new recruits. Frankly, I'm surprised as many survived as, as they did. I have to replace this poor dog. Man, this is just pure disaster. I guess I could slow down the regular goblins by putting a bunch of doors here and locking them. I don't think trolls are good at climbing. It doesn't appear that any of the trolls really did much climbing. But still, I got a, I got a ceiling over all of these. And then I got to, I guess, construct additional ceilings to prevent climbers from the outside. Or really from the inside, from any direction. Although it looked like most of the climbing was happening from the front here. That could have gone really bad, folks. Could have gone really bad, but luckily our war dogs and grizzly bears took care of one guy and our troops took care of the rest. Quickly before we end the episode. Oh good, the output Lazy Allen is here. Great. So okay, we have I decided to just go for broke here. I'm going all in on water wheels. There are four water wheels here. They're all spinning and creating power. I have a lever here that's connecting to the gear assembly, although I'm gonna disassemble it and remove it, because I think I'm gonna build an, another wall on the inside and the way this pyramid is going to look is going to be like a mine pyramid so the steps of it are not going to be climbable well i mean i guess you can climb them but they're not going to be walkable instead i'm going to have ramps that lead up okay those ramps are going to go all the way to the top but there's going to be doors set into certain areas like for example you go up one ramp and then you can walk let's say a door here and the next floor up this one will be the dining hall so i'm still kind of working on the logistics this is the water that the pump is going to pull out from. So the pump is going to pull from here, and then it's going to deposit the water 
here, and I'm gonna connect it to the gear assembly so it'll work. And this is roughly in the middle, so the middle is actually two squares. So here, 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 and here. So it's roughly here. So this is gonna be the main pump stack, and it's just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the top of the pyramid where the water is gonna let go. And I'm hoping it'll go in all four cardinal directions. And then I'm gonna create a ramp specifically for that purpose that, that the dwarves cannot get to. Although I don't think there's any way to actually prevent them from getting to it. It might lead to death and injury. We'll see. I'll restrict it or something. And then anyways, it's going to go to about here. And then it's going to fall through. Maybe it'll go like here. And then stop. And there'll be like a grate that it'll fall through. And then it'll fall through into the dining hall. And it'll fall through the grate there. I'll maybe put fortifications around it. Although we've discovered that dwarves can jump over fortifications apparently. And then it'll fall here. So I have to dig out like holes here where the water can then fall into the river again and continue to roll out. So that's how it's going to work. It's going to be especially hard here because the water wheels are kind of in the way. But it's okay. I may not do it here or whatever. I'll figure it out. But so that's my goal. Will it see fruition in the way that I envision it? Who knows? I'm very terrible at power and water, so I might screw it all up. But if nothing else, it'll be fun to look at, I suppose. Oh, you know what? I disassembled this, so I should also disassemble this here. I'm getting rid of this staircase. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so this floor, I'm going to floor this over, and this is going to be the dining hall. Then I'll build, obviously, another wall on the inside, and so on and so forth. That's how we're going to move up. And I might screw up this whole water thing, but hopefully it'll be for the best. And we didn't really use that many bolts, but I got to work on something here about me scared dwarves, because they, they saw really soon those uh, goblins, and that wasn't perfect. Unfortunately, I can't move them back, and I put too much effort into this wall. I can't just, like, extend it out further because that would just require so much deconstruction that it would make my heart bleed. Anyway, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Marcus Aurelius. I hope you are enjoying watching the travails and foibles of Forest Home, my dwarven forest city in the world of Enthador, a civilization of the Oaken Flags. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.